Welcome back. This tutorial is on texturing the upper saucer hull. If you like these tutorials or find them helpful, then please remember to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell icon to be notified when I post new tutorials. Welcome back. All right. Today we're going to try and tackle a little bit of texturing. I'm going to show you how I did some of this. Again, it's not exhaustive, and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of crazy stuff that you can actually do in 3D uh, to make your ship look uh, more like the real thing. But um, here's one example. You can see that... Uh, I, you can't see. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Uh, I did the neck first. It's a fairly flattish area. And I don't want to go wild, hog wild, uh, with the detailing because the detailing on the original was actually fairly simple. There's a lot more on the model than most people ever saw or guessed. But in my eyes, this is fairly accurate to what they had done. I've got my bluish section on the front of the neck. I've got some space dirt. And because... Um, well, in most models today, you'll see all these patches and so on, kind of inspired by a Star Trek The Motion Picture, where they use different, slight differences in the paint scheme, uh, trying to make it look like every hull plate was put in place, and you could see it when the light shone on something just right, and you'd get different specularity, and they had slightly different colors on adjoining panels. But they didn't do that with the original. The original had some detail painted on it. They had some dirt painted on it, trying to make it look like a lived-in space. It had some pencil lines, because Gene Roddenberry wanted a sensor grid on the ship and the model builders didn't want to put it there. Uh, and there were changes, of course, made to the model uh, throughout the production run from both pilots uh, through the first two seasons of the show. Season three only used uh, old shots of the Enterprise uh, that had already been done in the first two seasons. But I'll show you how to do this and I will show you how I did this. Whoops, not this. There we go. All right, this is my attempt to try and look like the original USS Enterprise 11-foot model season two uh, production run of the Enterprise. Now, I've got some specularity on there where I've made some changes, and I, I should probably tone down the specularity on the grid. The grid I don't know how clearly this is going to show up in the tutorial, but I've got my grid line there. If we got sufficiently close, you could actually see it no matter what, as long as it was uh, lit fairly well. But to enhance it a little more, I, I made it less reflective than the, semi than the satin semi-gloss of the hull. The hull base color is the same as the material hull color that I showed you before. And I'll show you how I did that and how I made each of these details. All right. So let's fire up Blender. And you can open up your uh, tutorial. Which my tutorial... This tutorial does not have any of the changes I have made yet. This is still in its original state. All right, so we've got our model. And if you go to seven, oh, hang on. Um, so seven on your number pad to get to the top view. I'm going to go to Z. Now, this doesn't really tell you much of anything. Oh, first, shift S and cursor to center. That's going to be important for what I'm going to show you. Now, if we go to textures, there are none. We haven't begun to texture this yet, and we're already looking at it with the materials, kind of. 
This is now trying to show us with lighting and so on what the material will look like. A little more accurate in the color than just solid. Solid is based on when you're in your materials. Um, sorry. Whatever viewport color you selected will show here. So this is what it looks like uh, in solid, but in material. It's trying to show you this, this color here and here that we selected. Now, it's not perfectly accurate and such. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's uh, glowing almost. It's not taking into account shadows or anything like that. All right. Now, one of the hardest things to do is I meant to show you when we were making the hull originally, this... Uh, primary saucer hull. I just had you make it complete. And that was a mistake. You, I, I, I meant to go back and have you spin the top and the bottom separately, and I didn't do that. So what I want to do today is I want to create a separate top half and bottom half of this primary hull. So I've selected it, and you'll notice the orange outline that shows what we've selected is all around the thing, right? This whole thing is one piece. I'm going to move this one piece to layer number four for right now. So let's go to layer number four. Everything else is out of the way. If I tab into this and A to deselect everything, you can see it's one great big piece. What a, that would be a, a mess to try and figure out. Now, if we zoom in here, because I had you do this rounded, and because there's a thickness to the hull, which I, I probably shouldn't have applied yet, but I did. So this becomes a little messy to try and figure out. But to me, this line here is important. The hull starts to curve back from that point. Or you could just as easily do it from here, but I like this one. And from this point, the hull kind of curves down. Uh, so that's kind of really the middle of this curve. It's like the forwardmost edge of this curve. And it goes all the way around the hull, as you can see. So what I want is... I want one copy of the top half, and I want another copy of the bottom half. So, if I go transparent, and I hit B, and I go between two rows here, I can highlight all of these and just keep going to the left until we select this top part. I will come back when that is done. Okay, I have just finished selecting my upper half of the saucer model and started it right where I showed you and I have one unbroken line going across. No, no jig jags, no missing areas that I can see. And if I take this to solid and we look at the top, it all looks uniformly selected. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's because that's a hole and we're seeing the bottom. All right, cool. So now you can do this one of a couple of ways, and I should have probably gone into this first. Uh, you don't have to do it this way. You could duplicate your saucer hull highlight the top half and delete it from one, highlight the bottom half and delete it from the other. What I'm going to show you is a way of preserving your original while making your top half and your lower half. So I'm going to shift D, which duplicates the whole thing, right? And then P to separate it by selection up top. Okay, cool. So now if I hit tab, I now have two hulls. This main hull and, as you can see, this top hull. 
So I'm going to move this to, to layer 5. Then we're going to go back. <laughs> and you've probably already guessed it. Yup, we are going to do it again. Only this time we're going to select the bottom half. And here's the thing. We started with, uh, we started with this row before. So we're going to keep that. We, we want the top half and the bottom half to exactly meet. So this time, I'm going to start here, B, and I'm going to pick everything on the bottom. So absolutely everything, including all the windows and portholes and everything like that. As a matter of fact, a fast way to get a lot of this done is that, and then just go in and finalize this top uh, section or the upper upper section of the lower lower portion of the hull however you want to put that wacky idea anyway uh, I will see you when this set of selections is finished be right back okay so I've got my uh, bottom half of the model if I hit z whoops I hit Z to uh, get rid of the transparency and control seven to look at the bottom. Everything looks selected on the bottom half that is and including the same starting line, same starting line that we had before. So that line is duplicated and they will literally overlap in our model. So we're going to shift D to duplicate that and then we're going to separate it by hitting P on our keyboard and selection so tab out we've got our whole hull and then we've got our just the bottom I'm gonna move that to layer 5 as well and believe it or not we have no more need for this uh, which is acting kinda of like a template I'm gonna move this over where I can go refer to it if I need it but there's literally nothing left in this area all right, so if I go to layer 5, I'm going to highlight the bottom, and I'm actually going to move that back to layer 4. So here's, oops, here's layer 4. Oh, worked out the other way around. Top half is on layer 4. Bottom half is on layer 5. It really doesn't matter. Now I've got that here. I guess I actually don't need this. I'm going to move this to, out of the way. And I've got two layers down on the bottom that are open for whatever I need to do, whatever I want to do. So now, there is a gentle curve to the upper saucer uh, hull. And if you go to the top view, 7, right? You could texture this like a plane. Now, I am nowhere... I, 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 let me back up. I, I am not an expert with Photoshop or GIMP. But I am far more facile with Photoshop. I know much more about Photoshop than I do about GIMP. I, I can barely scratch my way through GIMP. And yet we're still going to make some textures. But I'm going to go to one of these empty layers. One of the things that I could do easily in Photoshop that I had a rough time replicating in GIMP when I started playing around earlier this week were the subtle texture lines for the grid for the hull. Now, again, I am trying to imitate kind of what the Enterprise looked like during the production run, and so I don't want prominent in-your-face grid lines. I want something subtle. So, again, Shift-S just to make sure that our cursor is in the center and we started it off centered around the saucer. So this is actually going to be extremely helpful I'm going to model an awful lot of what you see here as textures. So that grid pattern, the text USS Enterprise and NCC-1701, the L-like uh, boxes in the back and the two squares of yellow, along with the red stripes and dark gray area here. And we're not going to bother with the BC deck yet, but we'll get these details and actually fairly quickly. So 
shift a we're going to add a plane um and of course this doesn't look like anything yet but what we're going to do is we're going to hit s for scale in the y direction and we want i think 0 0.01 well, i think we want even thinner than that my mistake okay so control z scale y 0 0.001 there we go. Now, I'm going to be obvious about this, and I'm going to go to our materials here, and I'm going to simply pick black. All right, so now it's perfectly centered, but it's not long enough. So we're going to scale in the X direction until it's just, just larger than the saucer. And we can confirm that by holding shift and clicking layer four and going to Z. If we run in here real fast, we'll see that our texture goes just beyond the hull. Okay, fine. I, I just wanted that kind of overlap for protection purposes. All right, so now this is perfectly centered up and if we if we go to rendered uh, right if we go to rendered we're not going to see anything unless we go up here to our environment world here and temporarily i'm going to change our background to white now this obviously doesn't do anything yet so take the strength up to one now you've got a white background and this light actually influences what you render You'll notice it's so thin that it looks gray. I don't want to model this way. I just want to give you a foretaste of what we're going to be doing. All right, let's just go back to wireframe. We're going to shift D to duplicate, and we're going to rotate 12.857 degrees. And I found that that's pretty much is going to get you through most of this. Now, with the number of grid lines on the hull, and the fact that a hull is 360 degrees, these are not actually all equal. At least one of these will be off. So shift D, rotate 12.857 degrees, and keep doing that until you get, basically it's going to be one half of the ship. Right? and rotate 12.857 degrees. Okay. So now I've got the center line and something touching each of these grid lines, but not the one in the center here, 90 degrees in. Here's why. I want you to make the life a little easier on yourself. Now with your last grid line selected that you've made, hold down shift and right mouse click each of the other grid lines. Control J to join them all as one object. Shift D to duplicate. Hit enter or right mouse click once. Rotate 90 degrees. And then shift and right mouse click your prior lines. Control J. You now have a single object. And if we wanted to look like, see what this would look like rendered, here's what it would look like rendered. All right. So very nice. We've got perfectly straight lines going all the way around the hull exactly the way we want. Great. Now, I'm so lazy, I don't want to go in and remake one of these for these circles. What we're going to do is we're going to grab one of the end pieces. So I'm going to tab into it. And if you look closely, you can actually see that we've got our vertices showing here. So I'm going to hit A to deselect all of them. B and select just two of these. Shift D, right? I've duplicated them with a right mouse click. And P to separate this from the parent. All right, so now I'm going to tab out and I'm going to click right on this end here and I get this tiny little segment. Now, before I lose this, and I have lost them before, Shift, Control, Alt, C. And I want to take the origin 
to the geometry and so now I can actually see this thing. This little line is indicated by that center right in the middle. Okay, so since it's right in the middle and we're going to do our concentric circles next, we're going to rotate 90. Ooh, nope. I've got it on my 3D cursor. I want bounding box center, rotate 90 degrees. Great. Now, I'm going to actually, let's move this to lower layer, layer 5. I'm going to jump to lower layer 5. There is our, our little item. Okay, zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to grab this GX, and I'm going to put it right on this line where the circle's going to be in the grid. Right? So grab X and center it up. Doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, close. Shift D. And do that for every one of these circles. I'll see you when we've got all of them in place. Okay, so I've actually got one at the intersection here of each of these lines. I am not bothering with near the BC deck. But I am going to hit B. Whoops. Sorry. B. And... Grab this whole line. And what happens? I get one centered on each of these lines. Great. I'm going to shift and right mouse click on one of them. Ah, this one. What the heck. All right, so that one of them is highlighted and the others are also selected, but they're not highlighted. Control J. They are now one object represented by this center. And if you haven't, make sure that your cursor is centered. Shift S, cursor to center. All right, so we have our object selected. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to tab into it, and I'm going to hit A to select all the vertices. So there's two <coughs> at each line. And if you got rid of, like I did, if you got rid of this uh, bar over here, you can bring it back with T, like Tango. And we're going to pick Spin. And the default is 9 and 90 degrees, so one for every 10 degrees. All right, I'm going to turn this to 400. And I'm going to change this to 360. And when I tab out, oh, let's go to material. Yeah, it should still be black. Okay, great. Now, if I hit, if I change this to rendered, we get nice circles. And actually, you can get in fairly close without seeing a lot of jaggedness. The closer you get, sooner or later, you'll actually see the segments that it's made out of. But that's, that's not important at the moment. All right, so now if I shift and right mouse click, lower layer, I'm sorry, left mouse click, lower layer four with the straight lines, I've now got our upper hull grid pattern and they are pencil thin lines they're very black but you can actually get in moderately close and still maintain the illusion of straight lines and and circular lines okay this is nice but it doesn't do us any good yet now either you could do a screen capture which i don't recommend or you can do something else and here's what i do so a to deselect Shift A, and I'm going to pick a camera. Now I'm going to go to my rendered, uh, my camera options, uh, but the render options, not the actual camera. So this is the uh, render, render options. And I've got, you know, standard 2 megapixel here. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to make this 2,000. Oh, not yet. Hang on. Uh, let's go to the camera options themselves. And I want you to pick orthographic. Now we go back here to the render options. 2,000 and make the second one 2,000. Okay, great. Now, if we go to 1, we'll notice we're not in the right spot. So I'm going to see if I can grab this in the Z direction. Right? And control 0 so we can see what's happening here. All right, so this is... This is too big. There's too much empty space. Actually, ideally, I want 
this to touch this. All right, so we know that both are perfectly centered. I'm just going to zoom in here on the edge of our camera. And oh, Not yet. Hang on. I should show you something first. Let's go back to our camera options where we picked orthographic. And here's our orthographic scale. The higher we go up, the smaller everything gets. So I want to go down. All right, so that looks like it's touching. Let's zoom in. Almost. You know what? That's close enough. That's excellent. So we've got a white background, and the longest line in both directions is almost touching our 2,000-pixel uh, render window, right? I'm going to go back here. Not for any reason. I'm going to hit F12, and I'm going to render this out. I'll come back as soon as the render is finished. Actually, let's chat a little bit while this is rendering. Anybody who knows what Blender likes may actually be wondering why I am not rendering this with a transparent background. Well, apparently, GIMP doesn't particularly care about uh, uh, PNG's transparencies. Uh, I made some PNGs with transparent backgrounds that would have been extremely easy to manipulate, but when you pull it into GIMP, it, it all looks black. So I'm going to render these out. As a matter of fact, I have made them uh, black and white. Oh, I'm sorry, not black and white. What am I saying? I have made these as BMP, bitmap pictures, the the Microsoft graphic uh, uh, graphic. Uh, choice uh, format of choice and that's fine that works png works so long as there's actually nothing that's transparent in the image it can make the uh, gimp can make png and you can actually kind of duplicate the transparent effect on a lot of stuff if you select a color and tell gimp that that color is to be transparent so you can create it you can duplicate it uh actually probably one of the things that i should have done was i should have investigated using psd uh format i think you can actually choose that hang on photoshop psd are you in here um no but i do know that blender does handle it hmm oh well doesn't matter this works so we've got our really nice mechanically good grid that will look close that will look good pretty close up. Won't look great right up to it, but I never saw a, a, a shot in the original series that was closer than this. If you want greater detail, that's not a problem. Up these to 4,000 and it'll be twice the detail. But for what we're doing, this is fine. I'm going to hit F3 on my keyboard. And I, I went to my desktop. I created a folder called Tutorial Textures. Um, you probably want to put this wherever you are saving your, uh, saving your textures or want to save your textures. You could put them uh, in a folder right next to wherever you're, you're building your model. But this I, I'm going to call, let's see here, uh, Tutorial Top Saucer Grid. Great. And save. Marvelous. Now, we're not done in, in Blender yet, but let's fire up GIMP. It's pretty quick. All right. And I'm going to open, file, open. I'm going to pick that tutorial. Where are you? Why, why am I not seeing what I just saved? Desktop, tutorial, texture. Hang on, where did I put this? Tutorial, 
tutorial top saucer grid. Okay, I'm going to right mouse click on that. Open with GIMP. And there we are. All right, now for whatever reason, this seems to show large images at like uh, at a lower resolution. It reduces the size of the image. This should be about 33%. If I go in here to view, it'll actually tell you the zoom is at 33%. So if I go to one to one, that's what this should look like when we are texturing our hull. The lines are nice and even. That's actually something that's better than what Photoshop does. Blender does it nicely. There are, these are actually jagged, but they have been smoothed out with how they render, and it is not transparent. But that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and on the lower right-hand side, this first icon on the left-hand side is creating a new layer. So I'm going to call this Hull Base Color. Okay, great. Now, I'm also going to see if I can... Can I move that? Yes. Just grab it and move it. I want that on the bottom. If you click on the eye on any one layer, the eye goes makes it, says whether it's visible or not. So visible? Invisible. Okay, marvelous. I want it to be invisible. I want to click this hull base color. And I want to do something else. Uh, in each of my descriptions, I put a whole bunch of references where you can go find... Um, uh, different resources. So I'm going to go down to where I keep my Gary Care stuff. And Gary Care has a marvelous reference uh, that he put together for the Smithsonian colors. So I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to open with GIMP. <clears throat> this is not how I did it. I actually opened it in Photoshop. I'm going to hit convert. Yes, I know. But the colors are relatively the same. Here's our production hull gray green. I'm going to go up here to view, zoom, and make it 100%. All right, great. Here's our colors. They're generally black and white. I'm going to pick the black, and I'm going to use this eyedropper select here. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to get my production hull gray green. And I'm going to add it to my list. So here it is production gray green okay good i'm going to go back to my my saucer hull here basic base color and there is a little thing that looks like a bucket so that's our fill i'm going to leave the defaults we've selected our color here's our here's our hull color right i'm just going to paint so now we've got our hull color great if i I don't want to paint anything else, so I'm just going to pick another tool. So if I turn back on the grid that we've just generated, well, of course, this is useless to us, Eric, you say, <laughs> because the background is white and we only want the grid. Well, believe it or not, there's actually a fairly easy way of handling this. There are some tools over here to allow you to handle each layer. Right now, the mode is set at normal, and the opacity is set at 100%. So we're going to change this. I'm going to click on this normal here. And I'm going to take it down to darken only. So now, whoop, I'm sorry. Base color should remain normal. Sorry. I want to select this grid. Change this from normal to darken only. There we go. And I don't want it this prominent. It was the grid. <clears throat> the grid was actually penciled in, remember, to fool Gene Roddenberry. The the effects guys wanted him. Yeah, yeah, Gene, go ahead, go take a look. You can you can see your grid on there, and they knew that the audience would never see it. We know it's there because of the clearer pictures that we get from DVD and Blu-ray and from shots of the model itself. But it, it was almost unnoticeable. So I'm going to click on double click on my opacity here. And I'm going to take this down to like 20%. Now, it's still there. Uh, view, zoom. I'm going to go to 200 for right now. You can see it's still there. But it looks like, I hate to say it, that it was penciled in, right? Okay. And, oh, I forgot. All right. We want 
the same reference that we've been using to model, we want the same reference here. So let's go to wherever you keep your blueprints. Like we are using Alan Sinclair's blueprints. So here's Alan Sinclair. And saucer top. Here's the saucer top. All right, so I'm going to right mouse click. Oh, you know what? There's probably an easier way. Uh, let's go to view, zoom. I'm going to do 100%. And I'm going to file open as layers. So each of these things over here on the right are layers. I'm going to run out to my drive where I keep my Alan Sinclair images. Uh, okay, and Alan Sinclair. Here we go. All right, it's now. Ooh. Preview. Okay. So I could sit here and go through each of these, or I could just get the name. So that's 1701 sheet 4. 1701 sheet 4. And I'm going to open that. Okay. So now, here it is, but it's facing the wrong direction. And this will be a lot easier if we make it face the correct direction. So layer, transform rotate 180 degrees. Okay, so at least it's facing in the right direction. I've got my selection tool here. Now the selection tool works a little oddly. You're going to want to highlight something that's not white. Like I'm going to grab a... Oh, see, it didn't work. Control Z. I'm going to grab something hopefully dark. Control Z. It just doesn't like that, does it? How about... The, uh, does it have to be the finger? Control Z. I'm going to grab this. Control Z. All right, so even though, that's really strange. I'm going to move this up here. Even though I've got my new sheet selected, no matter what. I, oh, okay, there. It's on the top. All right, great. We want this in the center, right at 1,000. And 1,000, I guess. That would be here. All right. So now, that's moderately well-centered. But I want to take the opacity down to 50%. And I'm going to run here. I'm going to take this back up to 100 for now. All right, so I'm on the sheet. I've got my four-way selection tool. And this is fairly well-centered. But we notice something. Number one, this image is much smaller than our render. So I'm going to view, zoom, and I'm going to go to about 50%. I can see front to back of the whole hull, and this is about half the size. So I'm going to go to layer, tr uh, scale layer, right? The unfortunate thing is it doesn't, it doesn't show you in real time what's going on. So I'm going to take my height of 2,000. I'm going to increase that to 4,000. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to grab my sheet and try and center this up. Okay, so I made it too large. There's the center. All right, so I'm going to undo that, Control-Z. And we'll try this again. So I'm going to take this to 3,000. And scale. 
I would prefer what I what I'm used to again in Photoshop is uh, you can actually manually scale something. And I really really like that. So I'm going to keep scaling this up a few percentages at a time until this outer edge comes right about here, right near the uh, edge of our image. Okay, I zoomed in to make sure that uh, I am my grid lines are matching the drawings. Every time you scale, go back and recenter your reference image, right? And it looks like I've got everything lined up to my satisfaction. It may not be perfect, but you know what? It is darn close. Okay, so that's pretty darn good. And for me, that was layer scale of uh, the, the height, thir uh, 3,413, and the top was, of course, 5,121. So that's, that's pretty darn good. It'll certainly do the job. Uh, I can center this a little better that way there all right so not too not too shabby centered pretty much all the way around all right great so i'm going to go back to view zoom and go to 100 so all right so this is the actual resolution of the image you can see it's actually larger than my screen which is fine that'll help me with some details i used to make the grid lines and the text and other textures in here all we're going to use uh, GIMP for is assembling the various elements that we're going to create in Blender, import them here, and then uh, turn this uh, into a texture that we can uh, that we can put. All right, so now the whole color we're going to leave alone. As a matter of fact, we're going to turn it off for now. Well, I'm going to leave it on for now. I'm going to go to the tutorial top. It's still set to darken. I'm going to take this 100% down to... 20% again, and then it's barely noticeable. Now, here's an interesting little item. It's barely noticeable here, but with the camera options, film options, and the way we light the Enterprise, plus the specularity that we're going to add, because we're going to make two versions of this image. We're going to have the colorized version, and we're going to have a black and white version to control specularity. And all of these things will make tiny details far more prominent, especially if we are using the um, filmic color management system in Blender <coughs> li like I am. All right, so this is a good start. I'm going to File, Save As, and we're going to call this, I've got a Tutorial Top Saucer Grid. I'm going to change this to Saucer Color. Grid uh, final. All right. So even though it's it's not final yet, this is going to be the image that we're going to be working on. All right. So I'm going to minimize uh, GIMP, and I'm going to go back to Blender. So this is fine as far as it goes, but it's just a start. All right. So um, now, oh, Eric, why didn't you join the spokes and the wheels together as one object. That's because I want to use the same uh, spoke grids for the texture for the lower saucer hull. I want them to meet exactly, and the best way for them to meet exactly is for them to be the exact same grid rendered at exactly the same scale. So I can move this set of circular spokes off to another layer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move both of them at the moment. I'm going to shift select. I'm going to move them to, I don't know, the last layer on the lower right. Okay, great. E easy for us to find. And I'm just going to go to lower grid five. Four has the camera. We're going to leave that untouched for now. <clears throat> also out in the resource list in each of my tutorials, there is, I do believe, a spot where you can get... Um, the appropriate font. Hang on one second. All right. Looks like I didn't include this. I'll have to put this in my uh, in my list uh, where you can get the Airborne 2 Pilot font 
uh, which is extremely helpful in creating the lettering on the hull. So I'll put that in my resource list. But here it is. The actual name is uh, A B uh, A R B N two P L T dot T T F True Type Font, and just you're going to want to download this and install it on your system, right? And then you can uh, you can access it in Blender. So here we are in Blender. I already have downloaded that font. So I'm going to go to text. So we're going to add some text. So shift A, oops, shift A, text. And right now it says just text. So I'm going to tab into this, backspace over it, and I'm going to type uh, NCC dash, whoops, no space, dash 1701. And it doesn't really matter what we do tab out grab and move this here now it's nice it's text but it's not the right font so shift home i've got my my text selected and now we've got a text uh a set of selections up here in blender so now down here we can actually choose a different font me I'm going to run to where I keep my fonts. And here's my Airborne 2 Pilot and Airborne 2 TTF. I'm just going to pick Airborne 2 TTF for now. And this is actually fairly close. I'm going to tab out. And I'm going to go to Object, Convert to Mesh. So now it's a mesh. And as a matter of fact, it's a mess of a mesh. So I'm going to go in and tab in. Now, it doesn't really matter. This sort of thing bothers me, and I actually used to model all of my fonts on the ship, but we're going to do our text as a part of the actual texture ring. So if you're going to clean it up the way I do, I go in, I pick edges, and I pick all these extraneous edges. As a matter of fact, you could do it with like a C, so long as you make it small enough. You only want to pick the stuff inside. You do not want to pick the outsides at all. Okay. Once you've got them, you may X and delete edges. Now you're left with just an outline. And you don't want that. You actually don't want that. So I'm going to go back to vertices mode. And I'm going to pick one, two, three, four when I can. And make faces. Uh, in corners, however, sometimes you wind up with a triangle. That's okay face, face, and face. This is now a lot cleaner, and it'll render better, too. I'm going to go to Materials, and I'm just going to pick Black. All right, so if I come out of this, and I go to Z for Solid, you can actually see NCC1701. You can clean up the rest of the text or not. It's up to you, so long as the lines don't show or you don't get any mis, uh, uh, misregistration or anything like that. So now I'm going to shift control alt C and origin to geometry, which puts it in theory right in the middle. I'm going to rotate this negative 90 degrees and I'm going to scale it down. All right. Now, unfortunately, the dash is not perfect. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to, you'll notice that these start on this line and they go out to about here. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to put the top of my one so that it's kind of like that. And I'm going to, well, actually, you know what? That's stupid. Grab X. That's kind of in the center. So I want it to extend a little beyond here and a little beyond here. So I'm going to scale. Oh, come on, Eric. There we go. And that looks about right. Uh, we can correct that. That's not a big deal. All right, so now I'm going to tab into it, make sure that not nothing is selected, and then I'm going to hit B. I'm going to select all the vertices for the N. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to bring it out here by this end, and I'm going to rotate. 
Now, if I've got the size about right, this should just about fit. It won't be perfect. All right, so that's not bad. Now, I think I'm going to tab out. Now, the whole thing is selected again, right? I'm going to scale just a tiny bit up. All right, great. Tab. I've still got my N selected. Grab and just move that into place. All right, now, if that's good enough for you, fine. If it's not good enough for you, then grab different vertices, right, and make them match Alan's outline. For me, this is actually worth it. It's a little extra work, but when you're done, I think the results look spectacular. <clears throat> Line up and all of these to the plan <clears throat> that Alan's got drawn for us, and I'll see you when you're done. Quick tip. Uh, you see, you can tell that I've got the first N and C uh, lined up, um, but there's no need to duplicate work, so I'm going to deselect everything. B, grab this letter C, which I have not changed. X, delete the vertices. Now I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to grab this other C that I have already corrected. Shift D, grab, move it into place, rotate this so that it's facing the right way, center it, and because I already corrected it when it was this C back here, these two are really ready to go. Uh, A to D select and tab out, and you can actually see this starting to come uh, into shape. So when you've got everything placed, come on back. Okay, you can see we've got NCC 1701 uh, lined up fairly well here with Alan's plans. Uh, and now, of course, what I want you to do is I want you to do the same with USS Enterprise. Notice that there are dots, there are periods in the USS. Come back when you're done with that. Tip. While you're trying to even out some things, there's a scaling trick that will help. I want all of these to be in line. So I'm going to hit scale, oops, sorry, scale in the Y direction and zero, meaning there's no difference. So now I'm going to grab Y and move them into place. Essentially, my E is done. almost forgot the R for uh, enterprise when you're, when you're fixing this. There's actually an extra uh, segment here that's not actually in the model. So I'm going to grab Y and move this down. This is fine where this is for now. But this, we need another, another segment. So I'm going to pick both of these. I'm going to hit subdivide. That gives me a new point here. I'm going to grab this and move it up. Now, I want this, 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 and this. So scale X, 0 all in the same line. I'm going to grab X, move them down just a little bit, and that's pretty good. Now, what's actually really nice about this is once you've got this done, you can actually just delete these down here, make sure there's a face here, and use it as a P. So, one, two, whoops, one, two, three, four, face, and then all you'd have to do is basically delete this and this and make this one continuous face and you have a P after you delete these. Okay, so I've duplicated my R, moved it over, over the P. I'm going to click these two verts, X vertices, and then as long as all of these are scale X zero. Yeah, I could actually leave that. I, I tend to like to clean it up, but you know what? For this, it's just not necessary. All right, almost done. Shift D, grab Y. See you in a few more seconds. Okay, so A to deselect. Ah, okay, nice. Uh, I've got some normal mapping issues here. Let's 
select my USS Enterprise. And I'm going to go to Mesh, Normals, Recalculate Outside. No. <laughs> I'm going to have to flip some of these manually. Uh, which one is looking correct? Oh. Hm. Now it's fine. Go figure. All right. Okay. So we've got USS Enterprise and NCC-1701. If we include the camera, so that's commonly known as the registry. So if we include the camera layer, right, and we've already got the background turned to white, we can render this. All right, now this doesn't take too long to render, and what I really should have done was I should have written down how much I had to, what changes I had to make to my grid in order to make it fit our image, but uh, this will work, and I can always figure it out. So now that that's finished rendering, F3, and I'm going to call this a Tutorial Top Saucer Registry. Oops. Now... Yeah. Why, Eric, did you not just do it all as one big image file? Because I want to be able to manipulate each element. So there's the grid, that's one element. The registry, all that text, that's another element. And yes, I am going to have you go back in and uh, model uh, these boxes and these little yellow boxes here. And then uh, I'm actually going to have you model one more thing right along here. And I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. First, I'm going to, now that I've made that, I'm going to uh, move. Oh, yeah, I put, them, I put them over here. All right. So we're going to leave the camera in place. I'm going to grab my registry, which I technically don't need anymore. B. And I'm going to move it. Well, to the same spot that I put my uh, my grid. Okay, great. Now, doesn't matter how you model this. You could model it with a bunch of uh, planes that you alter or whatever. I like to take one plane, uh, make it look like uh, either one of these, and then mirror it. So I'll show you that real fast. Shift A, mesh, plane, C to make it transparent. Uh, S to scale, bring it down, make it small, grab this, and we'll center up on one of the little yellow rectangles here, and scale. All right, so that's about the right size, scale Y, and that's about the right size. So. Okay, terrific. For this, I don't bother mirroring, I just shift D, grab Y, and move it into position. That'll be good enough. All right, cool. A, shift A, add another plane. So here's another plane. Grab this, move it over one of these weird boxes, scale it down. That's about right. And grab this and move it closer to place. Actually, that's almost perfect. All right, now. Um, don't worry about overlap with this yet. I'm going to tab into it. I'm going to grab these two vertices. I'm going to grab Y and move them out here. Free of all the noise that sounds like construction. It's my wife. Control R. We're going to put one line in place and make it match right there. A, Control R. And put one here. Great. I'm going to grab this tab, this vertice, X, delete, vert. Marvelous. Now, I don't know, a lazy way, I suppose, would be control R. I don't see any reason not to be lazy. Control R. Control R. Control R. R and 
and control R. Now, sadly, even though we're using Alan's plans, if I go in, I'm going to select these edges here and here. X and get rid of edges. Okay, great. I'm going to switch over to vertices. I don't need these vertices here. One, two, three, four. So X and dissolve vertices. All right. The rest, oh no, these, I don't need these. One, two, three, four. X, dissolve vertices. Okay, great. So I've got my lines in place. I've got my verts where I need them. I can adjust them. But if I was to render this out, actually, these would not be the same thickness. So, shift A, add plane. We've got a perfect square. Anytime we add a plane, scale. And I don't know, I think I like this thickness here. I'll be right back. No problem at work, I had to attend to. All right, so now. I've got one complete square, oh, I'm sorry, one thing that is completely square, and I've got it set to the width that I want. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to duplicate that, Shift-D, and I'm going to move it to each major section, and then I'm going to make sure that this aligns properly, that the thicknesses are all the same. Simply grab this, match it up with one edge, right? Come out, tab, grab all the verts on the line that you wish to modify. Grab Y or X, you know, whichever direction. And now this should be the same width as this. And I'm going to grab this, move it over here, and do the same thing. All right, when all your widths are the same, come on back. So I'm going to delete my little reference uh, square because I no longer need that. And now we've got something that is, in theory, the same thickness all the way around. So I'm going to make this uh, like a dark hull gray. Then I'm going to pick this and I'm going to make it I don't think I have a yellow in here yet. Hang on one second. Let's go back to GIMP. I'm going to go to our Gary Care uh, set of uh, recommended colors. And I'm going to grab, a, you know, click on the gray. Oh, if you haven't, make sure you click this and add the gray as one of your permanent colors here. I'm going to grab this selector click it in the yellow markings and i've got lists for uh the correct color um here's html i'm gonna control c copy that go out to blender i'm gonna create a new material call it uh, yellow marking diffuse is good enough for right now I'm going to hit hex and V. And we get the yellow that we want. So I'm going to viewport color. I'm just going to select this. All right, marvelous. So I'm going to come down here and also pick yellow. Yellow marker. Okay, good. And all that's left is this. So same old trick, so long as your cursor is centered. Shift uh, S cursor to center, right? Now, I've got my weird box selected, so I'm going to shift Control alt c I'm going to send the origin to the 3D cursor. Great! I'm going to go over here to our modifiers, add a mirror modifier, uncheck X, but double check, uh, check on Y there. Don't need clipping because they are not touching. And we could render this. So if we include the camera layer, shift left click 
and then I'll see you in a minute. All right, I really probably should have done these each separately. Uh, render the yellow against the black background and the gray boxes against the white background. But for right now, uh, F, uh, F3. And I'm going to call this, instead of top saucer registry, top saucer, I don't know, boxes. Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to move these four items out to here and go back to lower layer five. Now, we've got these two red stripes. You can do that with a, uh, a plane, duplicate it and make it red. And then if you want, you can also put something here, but I think we could probably take care of that in GIMP itself. Um, there's one other thing that I want you to do. Let me get a reference for you. The ample evidence of this uh, on this second set of squares from one uh, degree out here, this segment uh, beyond the light, all the way around to one segment beyond this light. Okay, and it's one segment inside. So it's not touching the registry. It's not touching the edge. And it's hard to get a good selection on things in GIMP. Um, so let's see here. I've got some other references. I mean, the rest ring is real. The struggle is real, right? Here you go, and you can see it ending there. I don't know why they put it in. It's just an odd detail. But I want to model something to reference uh, when we go to make our texture. So you know what? This is already over an hour. I'm going to cut here, and we will pick up with modeling the rust ring in the next tutorial.